When it comes to monetizing, so we sell uh, IT ser managed IT services and managed mm -hmm. cybersecurity services, yep. right? And I don't want to be all fear mongering because with security, it's easy to go down that road and it's fear, fear, fear. We're saving mm -hmm. you from the bad guys. And yes, we are. But I, my challenge and what I'm trying to do, and it's fine if the answer is, look, you, that's how you do it. You got to you got to focus on what you're saving them. Oh, totally cool. But I'm looking for is there another way of monetizing because it's, it's very similar to insurance in a way. Mm -hmm. In that you know we're saving you from the the downside of of hackers, right? What's the cost of ransomware? If you if your if your company were to get hit today with ransomware, what's that going to cost you? If you're if you uh, in terms of reputation, dollar amount, you name it. So there's a lot of that, and I and I'm just kind of wondering if maybe I'm missing something, or if you see if there's something obvious to you or anybody else who's like, oh yeah, when it comes to I, fire away. Oh, well, go ahead. I got some ideas for you right now. I got I'm ready. three. One, two, three. And pardon, my handwriting's really bad, but I'll talk you guys through this. Okay, it's not my spelling and handwriting, it's not my strong suit. Yet both my kids are artists. I don't know where they got it from. Okay, so you've got IT security, yes, Matt? Yep. Fear mongering, right? Everything that you're talking about, and that's okay. We you have a fiduciary responsibility to address those issues, right? And not just a fiduciary, you have a moral obligation because you are in the business of preventing, preventing them from going out of business or worse. By the way, there are worse things than going out of business and that is this, a lawsuit, okay? So you help them with all that and I'm, I'm gonna put that under S for safety, okay? Let me give you two others that just popped into my head as you were talking. And these are the things that you guys should think about on a regular basis because there's probably four five, six, seven. This is something I, this is a little chart I did with John Fitzgerald like two years ago and he eight times his sales because he was selling one thing. It was a piece of software and it, it helped them speed up things, but he forgot about all the other things. Okay. So number one, safety. Here's number two that you're probably not talking about people. What do I mean by people? Who's doing that now? Right? Well, how much time are they spending keeping up with what's going on with cybersecurity. Are they the best person to be doing that? Have you ever ran into a situation where you have internal conflicts because somebody was supposed to be looking out for something and it's not their fault. The last thing you want to do is get in, get in trouble by throwing mud at employees. It's not their fault, right? They're not an expert on it. They're not thinking about this kind of stuff all day, every day. They're not laying in bed at night thinking about this stuff the way that we are. I get it, they've got other things to do, but maybe a CIO or somebody in your technology department would kind of miss the ball on something. Has there ever been any internal arguments that have happened because you guys found out after the fact, right? Yeah, how did those go down? Not, not good, I mean, we kind of have, it's a love-hate relationship with our internal IT department. Do you think a lot of that is because they're unable to keep up to speed? Have you ever had somebody leave the organization? You can have a ton of dialogue around people. And by the way, I'm just telling you as somebody that sits in many a boardroom a year, these are the little things in cybersecurity that nobody talks about. People get fired over a security issue. People leave their job over a security. Why would they leave their job over a security issue? Because they're tired of trying to keep up with it. They're tired of taking, we used to call it when I worked at Vertifor, the bat phone. Somebody would have to take the bat phone home every night in case there was a, God forbid, a breach, right? Because that's the person that's got to come into the office and try and unwind this thing. There's a lot of stress involved with cybersecurity. Here's the other S, scale. Sure, got it all done right now. Got it. Just out of curiosity, what if the business doubles? What's your plan to scale and keep up with that? What if, as with most businesses that I'm talking to like yours, without even knowing it, their data push has increased 2,400% in the last three years? How are you guys dealing with the increase in bandwidth, the increase in storage, and the constant demand for more speed while keeping everything safe, right? So there's three. I just pulled out a my butt. But you not only have safety, we have the people and we have the scale, right? Oh, we're totally safe, we're good, right? Well, our people are happy, we never have a problem. What's your plans for growth? Oh, we'd like to go 5X over the next couple years. 
perfect. I will be here when you guys are ready to not only be secure, but to take the load off your people. If you're planning on growing, there's gonna be a lot of other stuff put on their shoulders. I can take this one off of it and put you in a position to not only 5X, 10X, 15X, but to scale infinitely as the business grows. Fair enough? Yeah. That's a compelling, that's a compelling discussion versus I can help you prevent risk. We're all good. Okay, one other thing on that, not to preach too much. There's a word I want you to avoid and it starts with a P and it's problems, okay? Avoid the word problems. Replace that word with challenges. Problems get people fired. And if you lead with what problems have you guys run into with your cybersecurity, every single person, almost every single person is gonna say, I don't have any problems. If you just simply pivot to the word challenge, what are the challenges you guys are facing with security? Oh my God. We had one of the stupidest things happen. I'm not gonna name names. Amanda Robinson. Amanda Robinson! Picked up one of those key fob drives in the parking lot, stuck it into her freaking computer in here. Suddenly, she was emailing every customer we have ever had, asking them to click on this link, major freaking challenge for us, right? I spent, took me 25 days to clean up that mess, right? You just simply change the word problems to the word challenges and they'll come clean that Amanda Robinson plugs something into her thing, right? They'll come clean that they don't really have their arms around it. You say problems, they're like, oh, I'm all good. Because nobody, they feel like they take problems personal. But challenges, right? Well, that's what I get paid to do. Right? Don't get paid to cause problems. I get paid to overcome challenges. It's really weird. Does that make sense? If you are worried about your career in sales, you should be. Over the last three weeks, I've been brought into seven of the top employers of sales professionals just like you. And there's a common theme with every single company that we're gonna start seeing right now. Sales reps are either going to get removed. Their job is gonna be gone. They're gonna be replaced. They're looking for new people that do it or they're going to be rewarded. We've entered an age where you simply can't depend on your company to keep giving you handouts and support. You need to take matters into your own hands. My name's Matt Easton. I'm the founder of Easton University. It's the most effective sales training in the world. We're gonna show you how to prospect, how to close, how to negotiate. We're gonna show you how to make twice as much as you're making right now in sales within 60 days. You're gonna have access to an online learning portal and you're gonna have the ability to do live coaching with me twice a week. You're gonna be around top performers from every single industry, people that are making mid six figures and even seven figures a year in sales. Click the link here to learn how you are about to become a certified master sales consultant. While everybody else is worrying about their jobs being removed, while everybody else is worrying about somebody coming in and replacing them, you are about to be rewarded. If you're excited about your career as a certified master sales consultant, you should be. Click the link now, I'll see you at Easton University.